Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me. My name is Adam, and this is a speed painting of a young woman at an archery competition. Uh, before I get to talking about the picture, let me say this is a new channel. It's going to be going through a lot of growing pains as I learn how to edit and add voiceover. Now, the long-term goal here is to be able to use this channel for storytelling, poetry, and of course, my paintings. I do a lot of uh, ekphrastic paintings where I pair poetry that I've written with paintings that I've painted. Um, sometimes I, I do, do both pieces of work simultaneously. Sometimes I'll do one work and then I'll add the painting or I'll do the painting and then add the poem. But this is a style of, of art that I really enjoy and I thought this would be a good medium to share those, that kind of art with you. So I plan to do that in the future. Now, right now my setup is pretty, is pretty bare. I'm using a phone a friend gave me and it's being balanced with some books. Um, while I film on a stool. <laughs> so I hope in the future that when the COVID situation calms down, I can cross the border to Thailand and get some better equipment. Now I'm American, but I'm currently in Hue Sai, Laos. So again, eventually I hope to get some better equipment. So in the meantime, please bear with me. Just try to enjoy and, and know that the videos will get better as I learn how to do this. Um, I did lose a lot of footage because my phone died a couple times from battery life and also the memory filled up once. So there is some skips in here and I apologize. So one day, one moment, there won't be a lot of background and then there will be a background and she won't have a face and then she'll have a face. So I apologize. Um, with all that out of the way, let me tell you a little bit about this painting. Um, I'm using Windsor Newton watercolors. I, I do use uh, for the face some Windsor and Newton white gouache, which uh, I don't like to do when I do my large paintings, but on the little paintings, I'm not too skilled at the faces, so I like to do it on those. Um, I apologize about the angle of the video. I'll try to improve that for next time, okay? Now, this painting is from a photograph I took at Sanju San Gendo. That day, they had an archery competition for the coming of age ceremony. Um, Sanju San Gendo is, a, is in Kyoto, a very famous tourist place in Japan. Now, I've been to Kyoto a couple times, and this last time I went, I wanted to visit the temples for a bodhisattva named Kanan. Now, Kanan is in English would be called Avalokite Savara, and this was part of a pilgrimage I wanted to start, which I'll discuss later in videos when I do paintings of Kanan. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little background about where I was. Now, in person, this young lady and her kimono were just stunning. So I asked her parents if it would be okay for me to take a photograph for my art, and they agreed. Um, I believe this young lady turned out to be about 20 years old because it's a coming of age tradition in, in Kyoto and in Buddhism in general in Japan, um, it's done at uh, the age of 20. Now, this particular contest, I believe, was called Toshia in the past, from what the people told me, but it's now called um, Omato Taikai. I, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Uh, my Japanese is really rusty. I haven't lived in Japan in a long time, so bear with that. Now, there were so many beautiful people that day, but she had a warm smile, and I love the color Konakodom Red, so any excuse to use that color, and I'm down. Now, I gave her family my business card, so if they wanted to see the finished product, I hope that they can. They did uh, already subscribe to my channel, um, my my art page, on Facebook. Now I was not able to capture a smile in this picture because I changed the face. And I typically paint large portraits, so I'm not as skilled at small faces. And when I paint them small, I tend to distort them and change them into different people. I don't know why I do that. I just can't seem to take the large portrait in a smaller size. I, I, I just like to do faces up close and then I can just capture the realism. So I will say this is inspired by the photo, but it is not an exact copy by any means when it comes to the face. The, the day I took this photo, it was cold and I had been living in the tropics and very hot countries like Laos and Thailand. So the day, that day I was actually freezing. So I didn't have a coat. I just had like this little thin cotton hoodie. So I used a lot of ultramarine blue to try to capture that, uh, that cold feeling. And I put that blue in my greens and I also used it with bird sienna to make a gray to, to give it a colder feel. And I, I hope I didn't overdo it. I'll let you guys decide that. Now, this painting does not include the temple, which is actually behind me in this image because uh, I, did, I didn't want to focus on the temple that day. 
What I did like was you can see Amaz Amazaki's shop in the background. There was quite a few older people sitting around enjoying this warm drink. And of course, one woman on her cell phone, which I included. It wouldn't be 2020 without at least someone on their phone. But from the portrait, I did include the two Japanese women drinking Amazaki. Now, Amazaki is a fermented Japanese rice drink. Uh, it does contain a little alcohol. So that day I didn't try it as I don't drink alcohol. I did find it at another temple at a later date that was made alcohol free. And I tried a sip of it. It is a warm drink with like a creamy consistency with a touch of ginger. Um, if I could find it regularly without alcohol, I would I would drink this. It, it tasted really good, especially when it was cold because it was a warm drink. I know they make it chilled for the summertime, but I, I, I never saw it when I was in Japan, except uh, in Osaka, um, Kansai area and Kyoto during the winter, but I'm sure it's more widespread. Um, if you visit Japan, please try it because it's been part of their culture for years. So you just need to ask if it's alcohol or not, if that concerns you. Um, let me talk a little bit about her outfit. That archer uniform that she's wearing, that's called a kyo kudo, I believe, but I've never, I've never done archery. So if I'm wrong, someone please help me in the comments. Um, the different parts uh, that like that beautiful red skirt, that's actually called a hakama. And I loved her hakama. Again, quinacridone red, and it had these white, uh, these white flowers on it. Now, see, I'm colorblind, so there's not a lot of colors that I really adore. And red is actually one of the colors I can't see normally. But if there's enough of it, I can actually pick it up because I think I'm I'm missing only half the cone, cones in my or rods. I mean, I have the cells in my eyes that detect red, but I'm missing the ones that do green and brown completely. So if I get close enough, like with my paints, I can actually see kunakodom red, and I think it's just a beautiful color. So again, that's a hakama, and I believe that it's held up by what's called an obi belt. Um, the the black chest piece that's a Mune ate, I, I might be pronouncing or remembering that wrong, but it, I believe it's called the mune ate. That's, a, that's like a chest guard. It protects them when they're shooting the, the bow. Um, she's also wearing a beautiful kimono. That's the top piece there. Um, her shoes are the two toed sandals called ta, tabi. Yeah, tabi. Now you can see she's got this uh, three fingered black glove on one hand. Now that's called a mitsugake, and it's, it's a type of yugake. They also make one with four fingers. Um, I think that one's called the Yotsugake. Uh, yotsu, yeah, 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 I think Yotsu's four. Now, there, uh, let's see here. The, the large bowl that she's holding, that's called a Yumi. And it's very different from the Western style longbow and uh, that we're used to seeing in movies. And the large string that, con that connects that, that's called a Tsuru. Um, I hope that's enough information for you that you enjoy. I should add that if you get the chance to go to Japan, I do recommend trying to see some festivals. You need to be careful not to get, go there during Obon or Golden Week because everybody in Japan travels during high season there. But there's a lot of smaller festivals that you really should go to. They're just, they're so unique. They've, they've got so much color to them. And most of Japanese society is very subdued. They don't want to be flashy. They don't want to stand out. They wear blacks, blues, and whites. It's, it's really boring, to be honest, most of the time. However, during festival times, people go out of their way to wear these vibrant kimonos, colorful patterns. They're just stunning. It's very beautiful. And that's probably the, some of the favorite things I've done in Japan is visit the the assortment, the plethora of festivals. Um, I would recommend um, the Firework Festival. I believe it's in August. Hanabi Matsuri. That's probably my favorite festival. And if you have a chance uh, to get there, to be there during one of those festivals, you won't be disappointed. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll just let it play the rest of the way by itself without me talking. Uh, thank you again for, for watching. I appreciate it.